And again, we're going to talk about exactly what's going on. We're once again with Ms. Sylvia Lemus, who's going to share with us about um, what's going on with COVID. I want to thank you. You're always making the time. I don't know if this is part of your regular working hours or not, but you're always here and you're always willing to give us half hour of your day once yeah. a week to be able to update us. And so thank you for being here. Can you tell us what the numbers look like today? Yes, Rafael, thank you for having me. And I'm always willing to be here, you know, whether it's part of my work or not, because it's important to share this information. But the data for, for this week for the county on COVID is that we have now 26,971 confirmed cases in Sonoma County, which is an increase in the last 24 hours of 32 cases. So we see the numbers starting to come down, uh, which is good news. And I'll share more information about that. Unfortunately, we have a total of 283 deaths, which is three additional people that lost their lives in the last 24 hours. Um, we're continue, continuing to do tests and we have now administered a total of 77,928 vaccines. Um, in the last 24 hours, uh, we um, we were able to complete 3,500 vaccines additionally. So we're also doing more and more vaccines. So about the metrics, you know, uh, we have returned now that the governor reopened the state home order. We've gone back to the to the California blueprint for safer economy, which we go back to the purple tier. So we're still in the purple tier, and what that means is that our, our rate of new daily cases per 100,000 um, um, residents is at 20.5. And it must be less than seven for us to move to the red tier, which is less restrictive. Our testing positivity rate is 5.2. It must be less than eight to be able to move to red. So that's a good, a good thing. But, and our equity metric testing, uh, which measures certain uh, areas in, in the county is 8.6% and it needs, needs to be less than 8%. So we're moving there. We still have some work to do, but mm -hmm. it's, we're getting there. So one of the things that uh, sounds to me is that there may not be enough people getting tested in the mm -hmm. last week or so. I don't know how mm -hmm. often they do these metrics, but mm -hmm. originally when we started with this um, virus, we didn't have enough testing places and people would have mm -hmm. to wait or people would have to schedule it long, long ahead. Now we even have pop-up testing sites. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to do more testing? Oh yes, we have to do a lot of testing. Let me just kind of go back a little bit, explain a little bit about why our numbers in certain areas are kind of high. Um, you remember our adjusted case rate right now is at 20.5 um, and it is actually higher than our current actual case rate, which is 16.8. And the reason that is, is because we're doing less testing as a county. Um, and the state awards counties are doing a lot of testing. When, when, when counties are doing a lot of testing, they, get, they award you and they do a calculation of your, um, of your daily case rate per 100,000 and it actually lowers those numbers. And so, so that's what's happening right now is, um, um, so in Sonoma County, our testing numbers have dropped below the state average. So we are getting penalized here in Sonoma County because our adjusted case rate, um, so which is a number used to determine which tier we're in. So that's why the 20, that 20.5, would be 16.8 if we were doing a lot more testing and be even lower if we continue to do more and more testing. So we need to really, a key message that we really would like to share is people to continue to get tested. If we really tell, let, need to let everyone know whether or not you have symptoms, get tested, because it's going to help us to reduce that number uh, in the calculation the state uses and be able to move into a more, a tier that's gonna, we'll be able to open up the county more and even schools and everything will be more, um, there'll be more opportunities uh, in all those areas. Um, we've really uh, adapted a lot of our uh, local testing to meet the needs of the whole county. We have testing throughout so many different options and different areas. Um, the first thing you would need to do is first check with your doctor or the clinic you go to and then check about testing. Uh, we also have OptumServe that has uh, sites in Windsor, Petaluma, uh, Santa Rosa. Project Baseline has a site in Santa Rosa. It's a collaboration with the state. Uh, we also have, again, OptumServe. State Run has sites through the corridor of Windsor, Petaluma, Santa Rosa. Um, we also have uh, pop-up testing at clinics in Cloverdale, um, Hillsburg, Santa Rosa, Sebastopol. And then the county still has county pop-up testing that we do in certain neighborhoods that are mostly impact impacted by COVID. And then curative also has testing sites in Runner Park. But we want to remind you that curative testing should only be done if you if you have symptoms. If you don't have symptoms, curative tests, you know, sometimes not as uh, reliable. Um, 
but we do have, for example, we still have the Monday through Friday testing at different locations. Um, for example, Mondays, Alexander Valley Healthcare and Alliance Medical Center has testing. On Tuesdays, Petaluma Health Center and Rana Park has testing. On Wednesdays, Sonoma Valley Community Health has testing. Thursdays, we have testing at Santa Rosa Community Health Center at Vista Campus and the West County Community Health at Annaly High School. Um, and so there's testing all over, including the pairing testing that we do Fridays at Andy's Unity Park all day from nine to four and Mondays at Rosen Library uh, from nine to four. And so we, for all of these, we recommend that you make an appointment um, for all of these. The only ones that you can kind of maybe show up a little early is Andy's Unity Park on Fridays and Mondays at Rosen Library. But otherwise we recommend that you go online, circleemergency.org. There's a get tested button on there that you can see all the links to where you need to make an appointment. Um, you can also call, there's a phone number hotline. You can call 565-4667 and they'll help direct you or help you to get an appointment. So it's really important. And we encourage everyone, whether you have symptoms or not, to get tested at one of those sites. It's gonna help our community to open up in a safer way. And it'll help us isolate, find and isolate where, where uh, people have uh, you know, a virus spread you know, so that we can kind of help them to get the resources they need. Yeah, many individuals, they don't have the symptoms, so they assume that everything is okay. And so they don't get mm -hmm. tested. So again, we are inviting everybody to please get tested. It helps us with the metrics. And as a result of that, over time, hopefully will help us prove to the state that our numbers are low and therefore open up more businesses which are suffering, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and schools. And we'll talk about that in a second. And so can you tell us about the vaccinations? We know that the vaccine made it to Sonoma County a while mm -hmm. back. I know there were some glitches here and there. Yeah. Can you tell us what's going on now? Sure. Yeah, so um, we started vaccinating around December, mid-December, when we started getting the vaccines. So we have now uh, um, administered a total of 70. 74,426 vaccines here in the county. That's 47,000 residents with the first dose and 13,350 residents that have got the first and a second dose of the vaccine. Um, so we have now uh, vaccinated roughly about 15% of our adult population here in Sonoma County. So that 74,000 does not include like, for example, CVS and Walgreens that receive their vaccines from the federal programs and some of the hospitals receive it directly from the state. So we don't have all those numbers, but we do include a lot of the different vaccination sites that we have and, and support, and also um, a lot of the clinics. Um, right now, you know, talking about some of the groups that we're vaccinating, we're currently vaccinating phase 1B tier one, which includes seniors over 70, 70 years and older, child care workers and agricultural workers. And you probably heard that SCO Office of Education has also vaccinated teachers starting this week. Um, and also, we also have started to vaccinate farm workers also in that, um, in that phase 1B tier one group. Uh, so a lot of the clinics are helping us with some of the vaccination of farm workers. So we have started that. Um, we, the county is currently supporting about 20 vaccination sites uh, and clinics, including 11 Safeway stores that are also helping, uh, including large vaccination sites at the fairgrounds, Petaluma JC campus, Huerta Jim and Windsor. And then we hope to, we, we plan next week to open up the Sonoma Veterans Hall um, with a vaccination site. Um, we do have the Optum Surf still around at Park, but that one we're still keeping it for 75 years and older because um, we're really trying to target and reach all the people in the 75 and older range at the Optum Surf site in Rana Park. So in total, we have the capacity to vaccinate about 2,500 people per day. Um, we are receiving from the state, I don't know if I shared about 6,000, 7,000 this week, we'll receive about 8,000 doses of vaccine. So it's increasing little by little. And with time, we'll, we hope to increase the vaccinations um, in all the different categories that we're trying to vaccinate. I do want to remind people that if they make an, an appointment because they're one of those categories and um, they find another one that's faster, that they remember to go back and cancel it because we're finding that some of the people are forgetting to cancel it. And that way they can open up, up a, a spot for other people. Good, and again, if you don't have access to be able to do it through a computer because you simply may be older mm -hmm. and not comfortable with using it, the internet, mm -hmm. maybe you don't have the internet, uh, you can always call 211 for assistance and then you mentioned yes. the 565 mm -hmm. number. Can you take, give us the 565 number again? Yes, uh, so so firstly they can call 211 the number and then they'll give them directions and help them. And then also the county um, hotline is 565-4667. It's primarily for testing, but they will also help direct and guide people as well. Good. It's important that the community takes care of itself and that we support each other at this moment 
uh, again, we want to make sure that as soon as possible, we can get back to school. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing. And I only have mm -hmm. about three minutes. If you can tell us what's going on with the schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the California Safe Schools for All plan is allowing um, Sonoma County schools serving grade levels from um, transitional kindergarten to sixth grade to be eligible to return to in-person learning. But they have to have an, uh, an approved uh, COVID safety plan. You've probably heard of CSP. It's called CSP, mm -hmm. a COVID-19 safety plan. Um, and that's based on that we are now at 25 per 100, 25 new cases per 100. That's how we're able to move into that new plan of having the school reopening for those grades. Uh, but we have to be able to hold that 25 cases per 100 for five days in order for them to say, okay, now you can start working on approving your plans and your school reopenings. So we still are in the purple tier. Um, all the other grade levels above sixth grade, once we're able to move into the red tier, then we can start looking at reopening some of the other grades. Um, but before reopening, like I said, the schools have to submit a plan to the county and to the state um, to make sure that it's reviewed and approved. Um, and they have to make the plan available online. I, I know there's a list right now of schools that have submitted their plans to the state and to the county. I don't have that information, but there is a list that's being circulated right now of those schools. But in the plan, the schools have to demonstrate that they have a plan for details, testing protocols, how to do contact tracing. Um, um, let me see the logistics of student drop-offs when students are dropped off, space, room spacing in the room, you know, because there's limitations, or even air ventilation and a lot of other safety factors. So once the plan is approved and the school um, can reopen, as long as the, the county has a case rate below 25 or 100,000. So we need to kind of um, just really be mindful of that and do the testing, do everything we can as a community to kind of keep those numbers down so our schools can stay open. Um, one, like I said, once we move to the red tier five, after five days, then we can look at opening up the schools um, past, um, past sixth grade to 12th grade. Um, so you'll see more information and maybe some of the other partners that come and talk to you, Rafael will share more information about those plans, but that's all uh, underway and the approvals and things are, are being reviewed right now. So again, a reminder to our community, we are going to get there just a little bit more patient. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure everything is being done safe and again, I'm sure your schools and school districts will contact you once they are ready to open up. And with that, I want to thank you again for taking the time and being with us here on Líderes del Futuro and KBBF. And I look forward to our next conversation next week. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you soon.